Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Maybe's message is titled, Receiving Communion. And our musical guest is Dennis Mayer, Jr. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tear to dim the eyes. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus as I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow there and no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Thank you, Dennis Mayer Jr., for that wonderful song, Anointed. He's a singer and he's available to sing at events. And now I have a very important message on my heart for each one of you. It's one that I'm very sure the Holy Ghost wants me to say. So I hope you listen up and be encouraged. And this message is about receiving communion. Receiving communion. I have learned over the decades of following Jesus, and for many decades I had communion pretty well every morning, rarely missed. I have discovered that communion is calling forth all that Lord Jesus has done for us through his virgin birth, through Mary, through his life on earth, his holy Son of God, um, through his 39 stripes that he bore for our healing, for our healing folks through the holy blood he shed to wash us whiter than snow when we repent of our sins. And all that Jesus did when he went to the cross and paid the debt in full for your sin and mine. And all that happened when Father rose him from the dead, and the Bible says he rose his people, the Christians as well. We are to live in resurrection power, we are to live in health. And I believe that communion is a time when we call to remembrance, that means to experience level, what Christ the Lord has done. And I'm going to share over the next few minutes as much scripture as I can, time allowing, to affirm what I'm saying. First of all, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 26, God's word says, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. 
do this in remembrance of me, the words of Jesus out of my mouth to your dear hearts. He instructed us, it's in remembrance of him. And I believe that means a calling to remembrance, to experience level, what he's done for us through his broken body. And then he said, the word of God says, in the same manner he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, he's saying, remember, remember me. Remember what I've done for you, says Jesus. Hallelujah. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So communion is calling forth victory over the world and all its evils, the old sinful nature, your sin, sin, Satan, sickness. Communion is calling forth all that God the Father did through sending his son Jesus Christ for you and me. I believe this with all my heart. This Sunday in our fellowship, we'll be having communion again, calling forth because so many people need healing. And sometimes it's just because we don't realize the importance of communion. It's, it's communion with Christ, communion with all he's done for us. So here are the words in um, Colossians 2, 9 to 15. Victory of Jesus Christ's cross, part of what we attain through communion. For in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Christ, who is the head of all principality and power. In Christ you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Hmm. Do you understand what circumcision is, beloved? It's a spiritual operation of God where your old sinful nature is put to death on that cross and you rise up in a new nature you got when you became a Christian born of God. You got a new nature and that new nature only loves what Jesus loves, amen? So that's what the circumcision means. Buried with Christ in baptism, baptism into his death, so your old nature stays there and you rise up in newness of life, hallelujah. You were raised together with Christ through faith and the working of God who raised Christ from the dead. And you, that's you and I, us dear Christians, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision, uncircumcision of your flesh, Christ made alive together with him, together with him, forever together, forever together, together forever. Hallelujah forgiving you all your trespasses. Now here, these next two verses really strong for the victory for you and I, and we call it to remembrance when we have communion. Here are these next few words of the victory over the enemy, really important. Having wiped out the handwriting of ordinances, requirements that was against you, took it out of the way, nailed it to the cross. Nailed it to the cross, your sins. It's like big black born in the sky and all your sins are there. And, and God just wiped them out to what Jesus did on that cross. And then the word of God says, verse 15, having disarmed the principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross of Christ. And you call that to remembrance, folks, you and I, when we have communion. So we do this in remembrance of the Lord. Now, what about healing? Well, Lord Jesus, he bore our sins, sicknesses, pains, griefs, and sorrows. By Christ's stripes, we are and were healed. That's the word of God. 1 Peter 2, 24. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. By Christ's stripes, we are healed, we were healed. That's past tense. 2,000 years ago, the healing was attained for you and me. Hallelujah to the King. He wants us to remember I've done this. Call to remembrance through communion, communion, communion. It's important, folks. So the Word of God says, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, He, car he bore our griefs, He carried our sorrows, you know, when you lose someone, you get sorrowful. He took your sorrow too, dear ones. So you will not 
go down with overmuch sorrow through the loss of a dear one. Jesus Christ, and he wants us to remember this, and we call it to remembrance at communion time. He bore our griefs, sins, sorrows, pains. He got some pains. He bore that too in his own precious holy body, wounded for our transgressions, our sins, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by Jesus Christ's stripes we are healed. Word of God says are and were. And again, in communion, we call it to remembrance. See, Jesus knows in our humanity we can forget things. Hallelujah. And so he wants us to remember, remember. And by Christ's cross, we are dead to the world's evils. Galatians 6, 14, Paul said, and I say it often in my prayers. So how do you bring alive the victories of what Christ did? You speak out what the Word of God says. Speak out what the Word of God says. I've been saying to some family members, eat healthy, drink healthy, think healthy, be healthy. Think what the Word says about you. If you look in the Word, you see what Jesus did on that cross, and when you have communion, you're calling it to remembrance. He told us to do so. It's in obedience, with joy. Let's have communion. Let's have it often, folks. This sweet, tender time with Jesus. Very, very precious to your heart. And he will come forth and bless you. Bring to remembrance, bring to experience level all Lord Jesus did for you. Because God loves you. Oh, God loves you so much. The love of God Almighty sent Jesus to the cross. God loves you, dear. Never doubt that God loves you, even when you're going through very trying times. And I know what it's like to go through trying times, folks. But it doesn't stop him from loving you. We don't go by, does God love me, by how you feel and by you just having everything all rosy-posy. No, God is a God of love. We have his word on it. God is a God of love. He showed the greatest love ever when he sent Jesus to the cross. There's just no more stronger love than that. And what Jesus has done for us, and we call it to remembrance, to experience level when we have communion. Jesus Christ is crucified, put to death, for your sins and mine, that old sinful nature crucified with Christ. It says so in 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 13. Now what I'm going to tell you now is something I have been affirming most days, almost daily, ever since I got born again. I think these words are profound, what I'm going to share in the next few moments, to bring to experience a fullness of what Christ has done to our experience level. Let me share it with you. 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 13. I set my heart to memorize it decades and decades ago. God's word says, out of my mouth to your dear hearts. He says, always, always, always bear it about in your body the death of Christ, that the life of Jesus Christ will be manifest in your mortal body. The death comes first. I'm going to do a message on that soon. The death comes first for the life to come. And you do call it to remembrance when you have communion. And so then he says it, always bearing about in your body the dying of Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus Christ may be manifest in your mortal body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus Christ may be manifest in your mortal body. So he talks in those just few verses twice. But know this. He wants you to know it. He wants you to call it to remembrance. He wants you to understand that uh, you have to bear in your body the death of Jesus to get the victory that the death gave you. And you, I believe you do it by the words. You say the word, and I say the word, and I believe as I speak it out, it makes it more stronger. Always delivered to the death. He said always. And then verse 12. So death works in us that life will work in you. I say this with all my heart. God, you know I believe this. Let them understand it. I say with all my heart, if the death of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is not working in Audrey Mabley to that old sinful nature and its ways, the life of Jesus Christ would not be flowing through the airways to help you, dear ones. 
the life of Jesus Christ, I believe, and I speak what I believe, flows through me because first the death happened. And I do call to remembrance what Jesus did for me, that God, by the Holy Spirit, through Christ in me, will move through the word of God that I speak. Death comes first, then life. Hallelujah. And you call it forth in communion. Call to experience, call to remembrance. Say what God's word says about your life. I, I can't say that strong enough. When you read the Bible, get in the Bible. If you're not in the Bible, get in the Bible. Turn a page in your life. This word is life. This word is spirit. Jesus Christ said, John 6, 63, you check it out. His words out of my mouth. He said, my words are life and spirit. Jesus said, out of my mouth to your heart and mine. Matthew 4, 4, Luke 4, 4. Jesus said, mankind, that's you and me, we do not live just by food alone, no. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So get in the word and discover who you are as a Christian. Discover who God is on your behalf. And you pray the word into your life. And for goodness sakes, pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in John 4, chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16, three places Jesus said, his words out of my mouth again. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. And I don't believe in the words say, in people saying, in your name. No, use the name of Yeshua Messiah. There's power in the name. There's power of God Almighty in that name. And so I believe and I'm speaking the death of Christ works in me, that the life of Christ will work in others when I speak God's word. It's God's word that does the work. I'm not doing the work. God's word does the work and the Holy Spirit in the word. So when you read the Bible and you see a good verse there you want in your life, pray it in in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen? So back to the communion that's so important. Jesus Christ totally defeated Satan, Hebrews 2, 14, and 15. Insomuch as the children have been partaker of flesh and blood, you and me, Jesus Christ himself likewise shared the same. He knows what it's like to hurt folks. He knows what it's like to need to eat and drink and sleep and rest. He understands humanity because he took on humanity. I'll read it word for word again, Hebrews 2, 14, 15. Inasmuch as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he likewise shared the same, that through death on that cross, death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil and release those who through fear of death were all our lifetime subject to bondage. So, until you receive Christ as Lord, and certainly follow him and do have communion, folks, your life is troubled through fear of death and bondage. But when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when you choose to believe, and you do have enough faith to believe, beloved. Oh, yes, you do. The Bible says so. Every man has a measure of faith. You believe enough to believe that God Almighty took the form of a human being and died on that cross for your sins and mine. He rose from the dead on the third day. Believe it, beloved. And then ask this holy Lord Jesus to come in your heart to be your Lord. Ask him to forgive you your sins. He'll wash you whiter than snow. Ask him to be your Lord and then do this. This is important. Speak with your mouth. Jesus Christ, you're my Lord. That's when angels rejoice. And if you want help to receive Jesus, you call in. The prayer counselor will help you. And I'll send you information to encourage you as well. Follow Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. And do have communion. That's a strong encouragement through this message. Thank you, Father. 1 John chapter 3, 5, and 8 tell us very clearly. Jesus Christ was manifest. That means he made himself known, real to you and I. Manifest to take away our sins and destroy the works of the devil. And it also says that um, 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He goes about doing good and healing all them that are oppressed of the devil. And I believe there's healing in communion. I believe that it's a mini meal that heals. Chuck Hayford has a book out. I think it's called Mini Meal That Heals. And he's the one that helped me to see the blessings, the blessings, the benefits of having communion. You can do it, beloved. Just get some juice, get some bread, cracker, and have communion with God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. And we have a pamphlet, and information about it will be shown. And we will send it to you absolutely free with instructions, because I believe it's really good before you have communion to repent of any wrong thought, word, deed, or reactions, and to forgive everyone. Get freshly scrubbed whiter than snow in the holy blood of Jesus. Are you aware of Isaiah 1.18 that says clearly, Yea, though your sins are red as scarlet, I will make you white as snow. How does he do that? 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sin, agree with God, I'm sorry, God. When you offend or hurt someone, repent. So agree with God that you have sinned and ask him to, to forgive you. And then instantly, if you're a Christian, have Jesus Christ as Lord, the holy blood of Jesus will scrub you whiter than snow, just as if you never did it. It will be in God's sea of, of forgetfulness no fishing allowed, hey? No. <laughs> God will forget it, and you forget it, and don't let the enemy bring it up to you. You know, there's no condemnation for us in Christ. Romans 8, verse 2, for there's a law. You know, Christians were under a law of the Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and it comes more to experience level, I believe, and I'll speak of what I'm a believing, when you have communion. Sweet communion with Father through Christ. Sweet communion, a, a tender time, a, a time where just you and him get close together. Communion. Oh, I encourage you have communion. Send for the pamphlet. We send it absolutely free. God loves you so much. He wants you and me to experience the fullness of what Christ did for us. It does take faith. I share with you in closing, within the last week, and this is May 2024, I was getting up in the middle of the night and uh, I heard the voice of God from the heavenlies. It wasn't to my thoughts, it was right out there. <laughs> like he called me June 20, 1980 into the family of God to be a minister. And I heard the voice of God and he shared a scripture that I wanted to share with you it's a beautiful scripture to raise your faith level. Of course, faith comes when you hear the word. And you hear the word a lot on eternally yours telecast. Amen. And the scripture that he spoke to me, and he knows that I knew that was in the Bible. And I knew where it was. Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. And this is the word here with your hearts. The communication, that means the outworking, of your faith becomes effectual through you acknowledging every good thing in you, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Every good thing in you, in Christ. See, when Father looks at you and me, and we're Christians, he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. And because of Jesus and all he did, that we call to remembrance through communion, you and I can be more happier people. Christians should be the happiest people on planet Earth. And I tell you the truth, no matter what life tosses me, I do my best. Don't lose your joy. And praise increases that joy. Amen. Oh, dear ones, it's been such a joy to serve our King Jesus in my 42nd year. But I want a grand slam for Jesus. I want to continue to be on the telecast. But being honest, the cost has raised many thousands. I'm asking for some people that can afford it to contribute $1,000 and more if you can. And any one of you, whatever you can manage, let's get some upfront money to stay on the air. Help us, please. God bless you. Amen.
sharing from my heart in Jesus to your dear hearts at tender time. Tender time is the time when, listen, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And there's a few things come to mind for you folks. One is the ministry that God has called me to. We send out a monthly newsletter. I ask God to give me an encouraging word. The way it goes across the nation. And if you call in, we'll be pleased to send it to you. It's an encouraging word, and we all need encouragement. And the most important thing I want to do at this tender time is say a word of strong prayer. I want to pray that God will cause communion with him to be especially meaningful. You see, Christianity is a love relationship with our God of love. Christianity, the only true faith, it is a love relationship with Father. And when we have communion, we're having an intimate one-on-one -on -one with God. And sometimes when I have communion, I have tears, especially when I break the bread and I remember his body was broken and drink the blood. And often I will sing a, a sweet song and it's uh, quite a well-known song in churches. And I know I don't have the best voice, but my heart is in the words. And it's, um, Holy Spirit, just help me here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just sing, I come to drink his blood, eat his flesh. Commune with God, drink his blood, eat his blood, flesh, commune with God. The total victory of all he's attained for us be manifest. Thank you, Father. Father in heaven, your people are going through a lot. You know about it. More than ever, year by year, we hear it through the telecast and one-on-one. -on -one. And whatever your dear people that have heard this telecast is going through, I just pray you minister to them. I pray that you give us a fresh awareness of your love. God Almighty, I pray you wrap us in your love, Father. Give us like a hug from heaven. I pray you freshly immerse us in the Holy Spirit. I pray your presence fill us, Father. I pray you help us have communion and it would be really meaningful, tender, intimate love relationship with you, Father, through Christ our Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.